and we are live all right good morning everyone hope you're all doing well so for today's mobility routine all you guys are going to need is your chair as well as a mat you have you're more than welcome to use a couch i recommend using a couch it's just i'm not in an area where i can use a couch all right so um i'm just going to make sure that we're running live on my laptop just let me know if you guys see me horizontally or vertically that's going to be my first question and then we'll go ahead and get started from there. So as long as you guys are seeing me vertically, uh, sorry, horizontally, we're good. That's usually the issue that I've been having. So let me just check the comments. Good morning, Nancy. Let me just make sure. All right, okay. On my end, it is horizontally, so we're good to go. All right, everyone, so I know I typically start off with breathing, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and start off with our toe touch squat and end off with our breathing. So I wanna switch things up a little bit. So for our toe touch squat, we're gonna switch up the variation so we're not doing the same one each and every time. I'm gonna get the timer running up there. So with our toe touch squat, I want you guys to start off in your push-up position. So in our high plank position. I'm gonna break it down and then we'll go ahead and start together. So high plank position. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk our feet in. So right foot, left foot. We're gonna hang out here. Let me just switch myself. So I'm in my deep squat right now. I wanna create this praying position. And what I'm gonna do is introduce movement. So I just wanna rock my body side to side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce movement within movement. What I want you to watch for is be mindful about keeping your heel on the ground and not lifting it off. So from here, Hands go back on the ground, hips come up. Again, we're gonna introduce movement in this position as well. So in our hip hinge position slightly, we're introducing movement. From here, walk your feet back, drop your hips. And this is gonna be our nice little chest opener. So I want you guys to look over each shoulder, right and left. So that's gonna be the basic breakdown. We're gonna go two minutes on this movement. We'll go together in three, Two, one, let's go for it, everyone. Again, high plank position. Go ahead and step both feet forward. You're gonna be in that deep squat. Hands come together. I want you to introduce some movement here. So our prayer pose, hands come back on the ground, hips come up. Again, introduce movement within this position as well. Walk your feet back, drop your hips, we're in our little chest opener, looking over your right shoulder and your left shoulder. Back into that high plank. Step the right foot in, step the left. In your squat, chest is up. Again, introducing that movement. Hands on the ground, hips up. Move around side to side as long as it feels good. Hands back on the ground, feet back. Hips down, look over your right side, look over your left. Hop back into that high plank. Step with the right, step with the left. Chest is up. Introduce that movement again as long as it feels good. Holding this position, hands back on the ground, hips up. Introduce that movement. Kick your feet back or walk your feet back. Drop your hips, look over each side. Back into that high plank, it's gonna be our last and final time doing it. Step the right, step the left. Let me just watch the comments. Good, again, introduce that movement as long as it feels good. So with the mobility routines, you guys are gonna be in charge of your own body. I'm gonna recommend and suggest as many modifications, progressions, different forms as I can, but ultimately it's up to you, whatever feels good. So once you finish looking over your right and left, we're gonna go with our spider walk. So back into that high plank position, go ahead and step your right foot in. From here, I want you to take the elbow as close to the ground as possible, even if that means getting parallel to your shin, rotate up. From here, drop your back leg down, lift up. Getting that nice little stretch in that hip flexor, as well as opening up the spine. Hands back on the ground, right foot back, left foot forward. 
Drop that left elbow down, rotate up. Drop your right leg down, lift up. I'm gonna give you guys a different angle for that one as well. Back into your high plank. Right foot forward, rotate up. Drop that back leg. Another variation you can do, instead of dropping that back leg, what you can do is just lift. Bend that back knee, come up into this position. That one is going to be a little more challenging if you guys are okay with that. Again, you're just gonna slightly bend that back knee. Make sure you're breathing through the movement and just make sure that it feels good on you. Let's go one more time on each side. Again, drop that elbow as close as you can get it to the ground. That's gonna give you ooh, a nice little hamstring stretch. Last one here. Drop that back leg, lift up. Very nice, go ahead and come up onto your feet, guys. We're gonna be doing a lateral lunge with the windmill. So, feet are gonna be about wider than my shoulders, toes pointing forward. We're gonna go hips back into the side. Let's start off with our right side, going all the way to the right. My right hand is gonna come towards the base of my foot, and the left is going to rotate up. Then I come back. I'm gonna to go towards my left, hips back to the side, left hand down, right hand up. So I want you to notice that my fingertips come to the base of my foot, so the arc, the arch of my foot. Again, always keeping my hips back to the side and getting that nice little stretch in my T-spine as well as my inner thigh. I want you to really push against that knee at that very bottom and rotate up. Try to get as much rotation as possible in that spine. Make sure you're moving with your breath. Two more on each side, everyone. Again, just make sure that it feels good. You're more than welcome to take the windmill part out and just focus on your lateral lunge. Whatever feels good for you guys. And I believe last one, if I counted right. Finish off with that last one, I may be a little ahead. From here, let's go ahead and get back on our mat. We're gonna go with an adductor stretch, so right in the inner thigh. What I want you to do is kick your right foot out. What I'm doing here is my, my toes are just pointing forward. Hands are gonna be placed right out in front, so my wrist beneath my shoulder, what I'm gonna do is I have my back toe digging into the ground. From here, all I'm gonna do is gently rock forward and gently rock back. I like to think about it as sitting down right on my feet. So sitting my butt on my heels, then driving back up. Again, moving nice and slow. This is gonna be a, a deep stretch, so please be careful with this one. If you're doing it on hardwood floors with socks, Please make sure that you have a good grip of the ground so you don't end up sliding further. We have 10 more seconds and we're gonna switch our side. Make sure you're moving with your breath. So this is gonna be a recovery movement as well. I know that the rest may have got our heart rates up just a little bit. Focus on breathing with this one. Four, three, two, go ahead and switch. Now left foot out, I want your toe to point forward. Wrist beneath your shoulders knee right beneath my hip and I'm just gonna rock back. Again, I like to think about it as sitting back, sitting all the way back onto my heels, then gently coming back up. Sitting all the way back into my heels, then gently coming back up. Keep it up for seven more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, everyone, we got a nice little new one, for, new one for you guys. So we're gonna start off in our bear position. The way you start off your bear is wrist beneath your shoulders, knees right beneath your hips. So this is our starting point. What we're gonna do from here is lift off only an inch. I want you to think about your back as a tabletop. So even when you lift off the ground, you still want that neutral spine, no mountains, no valleys, no in-betweens. So, Right here, wrist beneath my shoulders, 
knees beneath my hips, lifting off just an inch to right here, still keeping my spine neutral. What I'm gonna do from here is go into a down dog, then back into my uh, bear. Up into a down dog, back into a bear. What I like to do, because I have very, very tight calves and um, tight uh, lats, is when I get up to my uh, down dog, I like to introduce movement. So lifting my heel off, coming back down, that really helps open up. Again, like I said, if you are tight like me, that would be a good little addition in there. So we're in our bear, and all we're gonna do is kick up into our down dog, hang out here if you'd like, hop back down, back up. Again, hang out here if you'd like, back down. I'm just gonna go ahead and check on some comments. Doesn't seem like we have much. What's up, Don? What's up, Stacy? Linda? Whew. Keep it up, guys. So with that movement, my down dog isn't the best, and that's okay. A regression for that is gonna be bending our knees. So a regression of a down dog is going to be right here, where I have my knees bent, and I'm really focusing on getting my head in between my arms. So I prefer doing that one because my hamstrings, my calves, my lats, you name it, they're all tight. Keep going for 20 more seconds on these guys. <sighs> Making sure you're moving with the breath. Again, I like to hang out here, get that nice little calf stretch in. My calves are always tight. <sighs> Seven seconds. Last one here, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. Catch your breath if that got you a little elevated. Our upcoming one is going to be a cat to camel. So again, wrists beneath our shoulders, knees beneath our hips. This is gonna be a nice and gentle one. So right about here, what I'm gonna do is exhale, round up. So exhale, rounding up. Inhale, coming down. What tends to happen with this movement that I just want you guys to keep in mind is you don't need to bend that elbow. The reason that that happens is we lose connection with our lats. So I want you to twist. So what that looks like is, Joe describes it as the eye of the elbow, you want it to look forward. That's gonna get your lats engaged. So in that position, now let's go ahead and exhale, round up, inhale, come up. That should help keep your elbows in place instead of bending down as you find that movement in your spine. Another variation to the cat camel is going to be segmentation. So segmentation, the way it's gonna look is you're gonna go up joint by joint or section by section of your spine. So for instance, when I'm gonna round up, I'm gonna go ahead and round up just from my tail and then come down from my tail. Just my lower body, just my lower body. So what you can do is to practice this movement or to focus on specific parts that you know need that improvement, you can try segmenting your cat cow or cat camel to that specific section. So trying to get as much uh, flexion and extension in that specific um, section. So I usually like to do my tailbone just because sometimes I do feel like I'm slightly more anterior or posterior. So that really helps me kind of keep my um, hips in check and just keep them as mobile as possible. Let's go for 15 more seconds. We're basically doing each movement for about a minute and a half, everyone. Keep it up for five, four, three, two, one. We got a couple more. So from here, we're gonna go into our bird dog. A bird dog is gonna be a very, very effective core exercise. So you're gonna start off the same exact way, wrists beneath our shoulders, knees beneath our hips, making sure that the eye of the elbow is always pointing forward. From here, opposite arm, opposite leg. So my right arm and my left knee are going to meet. I'm gonna really focus on the crunch here and then come back out and hold. So it's very, it's very heavily, it requires a lot of balance and core stability. So if you are rocking side to side a little bit, that's okay. What I typically do, what I did in the beginning was I would broaden my base. 
So the wider you are, the easier it kind of becomes. So again, from right here, we're gonna go 30 seconds on right arm, left knee. So 30 seconds per side. We'll go in three, two, one. Let's go, everyone. Right arm to left knee, and you're gonna explode out. Hold for two. You wanna make sure you're, you're holding your end range for two seconds. When your elbow meets your knee, pause. Come out, pause. 15 to go. Make sure you're moving with your breath with this movement. And if you do or are experiencing any wrist pains like I do, go ahead and create a fist and put your fist down. Or if you have some dumbbells, go ahead and grab that dumbbell and hold the dumbbell instead. Let's go ahead and switch left arm, right knee. Again, so when it starts to hurt for me, I just create a fist and that usually does the job. The reason for most of the wrist pain is because it's extensive flexion. Well, for me, even though it's not much, it definitely um, starts to aggravate. So if you're anything like me, again, you can always resort to wrist uh, fists. And if that's not comfortable, a dumbbell or even just elevating the surface, which can help. 10 seconds, everyone. From here, we're gonna go ahead and get into, we're gonna start using the chair or the couch, whatever you have on hand. Oh, this one is gonna be brutal for me. All right, everyone. So, go ahead and grab your chair or get closer to your couch, whatever you have. What we're gonna do here is it's gonna be a hip flexor stretch. Oh, man. All right, so you're gonna, I'm gonna get a pad, give me one second. Grab a pillow for your knee so you don't aggravate the knee. What we're gonna do is one foot is going to come up onto the surface, whether it's your couch or your chair. What we're gonna do is we're gonna work three planes of motion here. So go ahead and hop into this position. I have my right knee down and my left knee up. What I'm doing here is we're first just gonna hold. I want you to tuck your tailbone under and tighten up that glute. So that already for me, oh, it pulls in, in a good way. It's a good stretch, but I can feel it going all the way down to my knee. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hold here and breathe. This is a pretty deep stretch for me. So again, just keep making sure that our tailbone is tucked in and we're holding. So from here, like I said, we're gonna introduce movement. So we have three planes of movement. We have forward and back, side to side, and we have rotation. So we're gonna introduce those right now. So from here, I want your hands to come up. We're gonna work on our forward and backwards, so flexion and extension. Oh, good God, I want you to extend and come and flex. We're just gonna work this here. I know you can't see much, but it is already on fire for me, so my movement is gonna be very minimal. So right here. Make sure you're breathing. If you need to come out of it, that is okay. If it's too deep of a stretch, go ahead and come out of it for a second. When you're ready, come back in. So we have seven more seconds. Total of 30 seconds on this. Three, two, one. So that was forward and backward. Good God. Now we're gonna work side to side. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come sideways and side, making sure that we're leading with our hip and our hands are just following. I'm gonna get a pass. Again, making sure that we're leading with our hips and our arms are just following. Oh, Jesus. Let's keep that up. Ten seconds, everyone. Again, you're more than welcome to come out of this stretch if it does aggravate. And we can also do this off of the, the bench or the chair, which I'll show you right now. Our final one is going to be rotation. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna move side to side. Usually the beginning, the first 30 seconds of this movement sucks for me because of how tight my, my um, quads and hip flexors are. But by the end of it, it you know, it feels decent, it feels okay. Keep it up everyone. Whew. Seven seconds, I'm just gonna hold this five, Four, three, two, one. Oh my God, go ahead and switch. So now I'm gonna do it off of this. So for those who are, who don't wanna use the chair or the, um, 
the couch. What we're gonna do now is switch your legs. So I have my left knee down and my right knee up. Same exact thing. So for those who are doing it on the couch, tuck your tailbone in. For those who, who are doing it like me, tuck your tailbone in. We're just gonna hold here. So that tuck is what's gonna stretch that um, hip flexor. A lot of people, the mistake that comes with this is people tend to go into this position, which is ineffective. The easiest way to do it is just tuck. And if that tuck is still not enough, then go ahead and lean just a little bit. So now from here, hands come up everyone. We're gonna go into our flexion and extension. Again, we're gonna be working three planes of movement. We have forward and back, we have side to side, and we have rotational. So we're gonna keep this up for another 15. From here, in 10 seconds, we're gonna go side to side. So keep this one up. Again, if you're doing it on the, on the uh, chair or the couch, we're doing the same exact thing. This is just a little less intensive. Three, two, one. Let's take it side to side. Again, I wanna try to move with my hip as much as possible. Allow your hands to just follow. That is gonna be the hardest part or it took me the longest to understand that because I was always just doing this, but I wanna move with my hip, move with my hip, making sure that I'm still tucked in. So don't lose that tuck. 15, everyone. One final one from here, couple more, and we're all done, folks. Oh God, five, four, three, two. Go ahead and come up. Reset your position if you have lost it, which is okay. And we're just gonna go side to side. We're trying to get as much movement in that hip as possible. So if you think about your hip, it's a ball and socket. What that means is it can do every single movement or basically every single movement. It works like this. So what we just worked was we just worked forward and back. We just did side to side. Now we're doing rotational. So we're basically working on every movement in the hip that we can do. Five, <clears throat> four, three, two, go ahead and come out of that. Let's go ahead and get into our 90-90 position. So we're gonna go 90-90. I'm gonna introduce a different movement here. So 90 degrees on your front knee. Let me just wait for that. 90 degrees on my back knee. My knee is in line with my hip. My feet are in 90, 90 degrees, basically. Hands come out in front. What I'm gonna do here is with my opposite hand, so for me with my left hand, I'm gonna go ahead and lean. So I'm gonna take it in between my arms or in between my side. This is, this is gonna be working my um, hips and my back simultaneously. So you're gonna be working on that front leg as well as your low back. Come back. Again, just a different variation. Keep it up for 15 and we'll go ahead and switch. Moving with your breath. Inhale down. Exhale, come back up. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Go ahead and switch your side. So now I'm gonna go left foot forward. Right foot is going to be back. Making sure that I'm in line. So I have my 90 up front. My knee is in line with my hip and I have my 90 degrees going on here. I plant both hands up front first, opposite hand or my right hand for this one is gonna go under and I drive back up. I'm gonna take it right underneath. For me, this one is a little deeper. You may notice that one side is a little tighter than the other, which is okay. But ever since I started getting a little more consistent with my own mobility, I do feel like, um, it's evened out. There still is a little more tightness, but I can definitely feel my difference. 10 seconds, three final movements left, everyone. Three, two, one. All right, so now in this position, we're gonna, we're gonna work on a shin box. The way that's gonna work is now I want you to come in a little closer. So now you're gonna take your 90-90 and kind of bring it in. So my knee isn't directly in line with my hip. So it's kind of like a triangle inside here. What we're gonna do is hands come up. So with this position, I have my chest straight and I slightly have my um, shoulder blades squeezed. So from here, I'm gonna lift up, creating a box with my shin, slow on my way down. So the way I like to think about this movement 
is dig my shin into the ground as much as possible. I want to make sure that you guys can see me because um, there's comments that are getting in the way of it. So let me go back here so you guys can follow along. So left foot forward, right foot back. What I'm gonna do is dig my left shin into the ground as I lift up. So the way it'll look, digging my shin into the ground as I lift up. Lock out my hips at the very top, slow my descend. What I want you to be cautious about is when you're coming down, I don't want you to flop. I want you to control that descent. So let's go ahead and go together in three, two, one, chest up, lift up, hold, lock out. Go down for four, three, two, one. I want a four second descent. Again, up, control that descent, lock out. Four, three, two, one. Again, lift up. We're only going five on each side. This is three, four, three, two, one. Make sure your core is engaged the whole time. This is gonna be four right here. Up, nice and tight. Your glutes should be on fire as well. And final one, everyone, and we'll switch our sides. Lift up, lock out, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and switch. Again, creating that box with my shin, making sure I push my right shin on the ground as I lift up. You're more than welcome to go fist out. I like to go in here. It's just my comfort. So three, two, one, lift up, lock out. Four seconds down, four, three, two, one, tap, lift up. Again, lock out your lock out your glutes, lock out your quads, make sure your core is tight. Four seconds on that way down. Inhale up, exhale down. Make sure you're moving with that breath. And final one from here after this. This is the last one here. Very nice, nice and slow. Now, go ahead and get onto your back. This is gonna be a little easier now. So we're gonna go with our T-spine piriformis. We had done this last week. Hands come out into that T position. I'm gonna cross my right leg over my left, creating that figure four. Lifting up and dropping towards my um, left side. So dropping towards the side with my knees still in that 90 degrees. Then I switch. Dropping towards the side with my knee in that 90 degrees. So we're combining both movements together. We have our piriformis stretch and we have our T-spine. So with the T-spine, what I want you to be cautious about is making sure that your shoulder blades stay on the ground as you go into the movement. So what tends to happen with our T-spine drill is towards that end range or towards the, towards the ground, our, our shoulder sometimes tends to lift. We want to avoid that. So the, um, the sole purpose of that movement is to make sure that we're keeping our shoulder blades down and back as we go into that movement. Let's keep it up for 15 more seconds. We have two final movements and we are all done. And make sure you're moving with your breath. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and extend out both feet, everyone. Keep your hands in that same position, so in our T position. I'm gonna lift my right leg up and take it towards my left arm. Coming back. I'm gonna lift my left leg up, take it towards my right arm or my right palm. Back. This is gonna be our leg crossover. Again, a nice little back stretch. What you can do, let me do it facing you guys. What you can do is you can hang out here. So I sometimes like to, I like to grab my right hand, place it on my knee. Left hand goes all the way on the ground. So it just gives me a nice little pull all on my left side, and then I switch. So again, it's up to you. You're gonna be um, in charge of your own body and in charge of if you'd like to hold the movement, if you'd like to go faster than me, slower than me, it's up to you on this one. Let's go for 15 seconds, and we're just gonna end off with our breathing, and we'll be done for the day, everyone. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hang out, 
Go ahead and bring your feet up or into that glute bridge position, so slightly closer to your butt. Hands go on my belly. Go ahead and close your eyes and we're just gonna focus on breathing. So I want four second inhale, so go with me. Four seconds inhale. Hold, seven, six, five, four, three, two, exhale. That was a very long hold, I know. Exhale it all out. When you reach that end, go ahead and blow that last little candle out. So again, four second inhale, deep inhale, four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go two more. So four second inhale, go for it. Four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two. Blow out that last little candle. One. Good. Last one. Deep inhale. Four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Go ahead and exhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, blow out that last little candle, one. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me and enjoy the rest of your day.